Chapter 8. Variation of Tactics. As the fire crackled and the smell of roasting meat filled the air, a group of orcs gathered around the campfire. The young orkling sat wide-eyed and eager, listening intently as Harguth and Zuljin, the tribe's respected leaders, shared their wisdom and experiences from their many battles and hunts. Zoga, a skilled young hunter, sat proudly among them, his latest catch of deer roasting over the fire. The orc warriors laughed and joked as they ate, relishing in the camaraderie and shared sense of purpose that came with being part of the tribe. The night was filled with the sounds of the forest and the occasional snap of a twig as the orcs sat in silence, taking in the words of their leaders and pondering their next steps in the ongoing struggle against the Dark Mages. In war, the war chief receives his commands from Tempest, collects his army and concentrates his forces, Harguth said, nodding in agreement with the ancient orcish wisdom. This is the first step in achieving victory. Zuljin grunted, his hand gesturing towards the fire. We must also remember the importance of unity and loyalty to Tempest. Without the support of Tempest, our efforts will be in vain. Harguth nodded, his hand running through his hair. We must also gather and train the strongest and most skilled warriors to make up our army. Only with a strong and united force can we hope to defeat our enemies and please Tempest. The two orcs sat in silence for a moment, contemplating their next move. The fire crackled and popped, casting a warm glow over their faces. We will be victorious, Harguth said with conviction, if we follow the commands of Tempest, gather and train a strong army, and maintain unity and loyalty. Zuljin grinned, agreed. Both orcs slammed their hands together in a sign of agreement, the sound echoing through the forest. Zuljin nodded slowly, his gaze distant as he pondered the ancient orcish wisdom. We must be sure to use our resources and allies wisely, he said. In difficult country, do not encamp, in country where high roads intersect, join hands with your allies. He gestured to Harguth with a closed fist. We must also recognize when we are in a hemmed-in situation and resort to stratagem. It is important to remember that in a desperate position, we must fight, Harguth said. But we must also be mindful of our surroundings and use the terrain to our advantage. He looked around the fire at the gathered orklings, who were wide-eyed and attentive. Remember, he said, we must always be prepared for battle, but we must also be wise in how we use our strength. Harguth nodded sagely as he stared into the fire. It is important to remember that our ultimate goal should be to win the war with minimal casualties and destruction, he said. We must use our knowledge of the terrain, our intelligence about the enemy, and our cunning in battle to achieve victory. He gestured for Zuljin to continue. We must also know when to attack and when to retreat, when to fight and when to negotiate, Zuljin said. He glanced at the orklings, who were beginning to drift off to sleep. And we must never forget the importance of timing. He paused and added with a grin, as the ancient orkish wisdoms say, strike when the iron is hot, but never when it is too hot. Zuljin nodded, his hands gesturing for emphasis. Indeed, the war chief who can use a variety of tactics will be victorious. The key is to understand when it is wise to switch from one tactic to another, as well as to recognize the strengths and weaknesses of each. Harguth agreed, adding, it is also important to know how to employ different strategies in different situations. We must remember that no two battles are alike and that the same strategy used in one battle may not be effective in another. The Orklings chirped in agreement, and Zogar asked, what about the importance of energy in warfare? How do we use it to our advantage? Zuljin smiled and said, energy is the lifeblood of warfare. It is what allows us to move quickly and take advantage of opportunities as they arise. The more energy we have, the greater our chances of success. Harguth nodded, adding, we must conserve our energy and use it wisely. It is only through careful planning and efficient deployment of our forces that we will be victorious. There are roads which must not be followed, armies which must not be attacked, towns which must not be besieged, positions which must not be contested, commands of tempest which must not be obeyed, Harguth said. The chief who does not understand these, may be well acquainted with the configuration of the country, yet he will not be able to turn his knowledge to practical account. Zuljin gestured with his hand towards the fire. It is also important to remember that sometimes, the path to victory is not through direct confrontation, but through strategic avoidance and manipulation. It is crucial that we understand when to fight and when to retreat. Harguth nodded, his hand running through his hair. 
we must also be aware of our limitations and not take on more than we can handle. We must also be able to recognize when Tempest's command is not in our best interest and have the courage to disobey. The two orcs sat in silence for a moment, contemplating their next move. The fire crackled and popped, casting a warm glow over their faces. We will be victorious, Harguth said with conviction, if we understand the importance of strategic avoidance and manipulation, recognize our limitations and have the courage to disobey Tempest's command when necessary. Zuljin grinned, agreed. Both orcs slammed their hands together in a sign of agreement, the sound echoing through the forest. We must also remember the ancient orcish wisdom of, to win 100 victories in 100 battles is not the acme of skill, to subdue the enemy without fighting is the acme of skill, Harguth added. We must not rely solely on brute force, but also on cunning and strategy. Zuljin nodded slowly and said, indeed. A wise leader must understand the importance of adapting their strategies to the ever-changing battlefield. Even if you are familiar with the five advantages, it is still essential to be able to adjust your plans accordingly. Harguth agreed, adding, and one must also be aware of their surroundings, both in terms of geography and of the enemy's tactics. Knowing which terrain will give you an advantage, or where the enemy is most likely to attack, can often mean the difference between victory and defeat. The Orklings chimed in, their voices filled with enthusiasm. Yes, grandfather. We know that knowledge is power. Harguth smiled and ruffled their hair. That's right. So remember, my children, never stop learning. For in war, knowledge is the key to victory. Zuljin grunted and said, the wise leader must consider both the strengths and weaknesses of his forces. He must use these to gain an advantage over his enemy. He gestured with his hands as he spoke, emphasizing his words. Harguth nodded sagely and added, and he must also be willing to accept losses in order to win. We must be prepared to face our enemies with courage, but we must also be ready to retreat when necessary. The Orklings looked at each other, understanding the importance of their leader's words. Zoga spoke up and asked, but how can we know when it is best to fight and when it is better to retreat? Zuljin smiled and said, it is all a matter of strategy. The wise leader must always be aware of the situation, and be ready to make quick decisions based on what will bring him the greatest advantage. He stood up and paced around the fire, gesturing as he spoke. We must use our intelligence and knowledge of the enemy to gain an edge, and be prepared to act accordingly. We must remain vigilant and cautious, Harguth said gravely, we cannot expect to gain an advantage without tempering our expectations. We must be aware of the enemy's tactics and use our own knowledge and intelligence to outwit them. Zuljin nodded his head and added, our strategy must be one that takes into account not only the terrain, but also the strength of our forces and our enemies. We must be mindful of the resources available to us, and how we can use them to our advantage. The Orklings around the fire nodded their heads in understanding as they listened intently to the two chiefs. Zoga spoke up, asking for clarification, so, you mean that we should use what we have to our advantage, even if it is not much? Harguth smiled at the young orc's question and replied, yes, Zoga. Even if we are outnumbered and outmatched, with the right strategy and tactics, we can still succeed in our goals. He gestured towards the fire, making a motion to signify strength and determination. Zuljin nodded and added, we must also remember to be flexible and adaptable in our strategies. The enemy may use unexpected tactics, so we must be ready to adjust our plans accordingly. He made a gesture with his hands, signifying confusion. The Orklings around the fire understood the importance of being prepared for any situation. Harguth and Zuljin shared a look, knowing that they could rely on each other in times of need. Zuljin nodded slowly, as he gestured with his hands in a gesture of strength. Yes, we must be willing to take advantage of any opportunity that arises, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem, he said. He then raised his hands in a gesture of apology, but we must also remember to use our intelligence and knowledge of the enemy to our advantage. Harguth nodded slowly, his eyes glowing in the firelight. We must strike hard and fast, he said, gesturing with a clenched fist. The enemy chief must be weakened by inflicting damage upon them, and we must make them constantly engage in battle. We must use our cunning to lure them into traps and allurements, and draw them to strategic points. Zuljin grunted in agreement. It is also important that we remain unpredictable and keep our enemies guessing, he added. 
we must not give away our plans or strategies too soon, or they will be prepared for us. He paused and glanced around at the young Orklings, who were watching intently. Our cunning and strength shall bring us victory in this war, he declared. We must be prepared for whatever our enemies may bring, Harguth said, gesturing with a raised hand. We should not rely on the hope that they won't attack us, but rather make sure that our position is unassailable. One of the Orklings piped up, what if they have cannons? Harguth smiled at the youngster, ruffling his hair as he answered, then we must be prepared to face them head on. We must be brave and stand our ground, but also use our intelligence and cunning to outwit them. He glanced over at Zul Jin, who gave a short grunt of approval. Zoga then asked, what if they outnumber us? How do we fight them? We must be smart with our strategy, answered Hargoof. We must divide our forces and deploy them in the most advantageous positions. We must also use our knowledge of the enemy against them, striking at their weaknesses while protecting our own. If we can do this, then we can prevail no matter the odds. It is important to remember these faults when planning for war, Harguth said, gesturing with his hands in a wide arc. Recklessness can lead to destruction, cowardice will be our undoing, and hasty tempers are easily provoked by insults. We must remain mindful of our honor, and not let it be stained by shame. Above all else, we must not allow ourselves to become too concerned with the safety of our men, or we will find ourselves bogged down in worry and trouble. We must strive to avoid these pitfalls at all costs, and maintain a clear and level head in the face of war, Zuljin continued. The two orcs sat in silence for a moment, contemplating their next move. The fire crackled and popped, casting a warm glow over their faces. We will be victorious, Harguth said with conviction, if we avoid the five besetting sins of a chief and maintain a clear and level head. The orclings, who had been quietly listening, piped up in agreement, nodding their heads and clapping their hands. Zoga, the young hunter, asked a question. How do we ensure that we maintain focus on our objectives while avoiding these pitfalls? Harguth smiled at the young orc's curiosity. We must have a clear vision of our goals and strategy, he said. We must remember that while we are fighting for victory, our ultimate goal is to protect our people and keep them safe. We must also be willing to take risks, but only when necessary. We must be decisive and bold, but not reckless. And finally, we must always strive to keep our honor intact. When an army is overthrown and its leader slain, Harguth said with a sober tone, the cause will surely be found among these five dangerous faults. Recklessness, cowardice, a hasty temper, a delicacy of honor, and over-solicitude for his men. These are the five besetting sins of a war chief, ruinous to the conduct of war and must be avoided at all costs. Zuljin agreed. We must be mindful of these faults, and let them be a subject of meditation. It is essential that we stay alert and aware of our actions and reactions at all times, and not let ourselves fall into these traps. Harguth nodded, his hand running through his hair. We must strive to be the best leaders that we can be, and not let our emotions and impulses cloud our judgment. We must always keep the safety and well-being of our troops in mind, while also ensuring the success of our mission. With the discussion of the ancient orcish wisdom and the five besetting sins of a war chief coming to an end, the two orcs sat back and relaxed by the fire. The deer they had hunted earlier had been cooked to perfection and consumed, and the ale they had brought with them had been drunk. As they sat in silence, lost in their thoughts, the fire crackled and popped, casting a warm glow over their faces. The forest was quiet, with only the occasional sound of a night bird and the rustling of leaves in the wind. We will be victorious, Harguth said with conviction, raising his mug of ale in a toast. To victory, Zuljin echoed, raising his own mug in response. The two orcs clinked their mugs together and took a drink, their eyes locked in a silent understanding of the importance of their discussion and the responsibilities that come with being a leader in war.